come and spend time with my wife, with my children, with my leaders at the local level. Can I continue? Can I continue? Yes. That's a very important level. Can I go further? Can I go further? Even in your own local church, make sure you have an accountability group. Don't do things without an accountability group. Margaret Irongo, Elizabeth Irongo, they sit on my leadership team. They are my local accountability group. What I'm doing in the local church. We meet regularly every month. We meet for prayer. We meet and discuss. At regional level, sub-regional level, I have an accountability group. At regional level, I have another accountability group led by Vimba. At the national level, I've got an accountability group led by Bishop Mark Karyuki. You need inspectors at every level as you go on. Are we together? Wachungaji, are we together? Hebu simameni? Mchaka mchaka, tu dakika moja, because I'm on my last point. I want to finish, so when you go, you go. Mchaka mchaka tu, hili damo, migu hili andoke, migu hili andoke. Na mi ni kunye tumaji kidogo. Imbe ganka? Haya tukai. Buwana asifiwe. Amen. Hey, Buwana asifiwe. Amen. Are we together? Yes. You need inspectors. Yes. You need what? Inspectors. So get yourself accountability groups. Some of them are within your organization. Make sure your region overseer, general overseer can come and see what you are doing. Open the door for them. Then also get some prophets to come. See people. Bring people who have got apostolic ministries. Internationally, I'm over, whenever I travel internationally, I've got an accountability group internationally. It's made people from Uganda, Zimbabwe, Zambia, India, UK, Canada, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, America. So whenever I'm in America, there are people who know I am there. There are people who know I'm in the UK. There are people who know when I'm, I go to Scandinavia. I don't just appear, praise God, I'm here. Glory to God. I tell them, I'm landing in your country on this day. I want to submit to you. I'm landing in, U I'm landing in Uganda on this day. I want Titus Oundo to know and Nicholas Wafula to know I'm landed in their country. Who are your inspectors? Who are your inspectors? Who are your inspectors? A good building must be submitted to inspectors. Amen? I said amen. amen. That's where the fivefold ministry comes in. My final point, then you, we take a break for lunch. I hope the lunch is ready. It's ready, eh? That's good. Not for me, for you. Every, we are going back to where we started. Peter Kamau, we're going back to where we started. Every house has a purpose. Not only does it have a plan, it has a what? A purpose. And for God's house, it is a place for him to dwell in. To have to build a church where God does not dwell in, you are wasting time. In the book of Acts, I think chapter 7 verse 49 God says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me that I may find my rest? I don't know that they got what I said. That should be Acts chapter 7 verse 49. What kind of house will you build for me that I may find my rest? It should be Acts chapter 7 verse 49. You can check it out. Yeah, it is there for you. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What's the next question? What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what's the place of my rest? Can God find rest in what you are building? Hey, Buana Sifiwe. 
Mungu akija ile kanisa umejenga sande hii shall he find a place to rest ama atatoroka <laughs> Kama kama unajenga kitu ambacho God cannot dwell in unajengea nani It must be a place where God can find a rest where his name is he told Moses tell them to build me a house that I may dwell among them the purpose of everything we are doing is to build a resting place for God here on earth that is the purpose that's why I told you let's let, to saw mambo ingine oh kanisa hata watowi au nimefungiwa nyumba the church purpose is not to pay your utility bills Please, Kenyan preachers, hear me. The purpose of the church is not to help you pay your utility bills. Go and work. If the church cannot give enough to support you, go and work. Now, see, you can do your Now, see, you can do your work. And don't allow anybody to despise you that you have a shop, you have a business, you have a farm. You have a transport business for where you are getting money to take care of your wife and your children. It is honorable. Kuliko kuambiwa kupigia watu simu. Niwe fungiwa nyumba. Haki ya mungu. Muki wangu wa melala inje. Anala inje mwana ume msima. Mlenad mambo mbotele anauliza. Lijibaba lizima kama wewe. Lijibaba lina mikono. Wezi kufanya kazi wewe mwenyewe. Ulishe mke wako na watoto. Je, huu ni ungwana? Kupiga simu kwa wenzako, nimbo nilipie nyumba. Talipiwa mpaka lini? Ikikulipia mwezi huu nani atakulipia mwezi huu jana? Mwezi wao ni gashara. Umeenda kwa Kamau, umekuja kwangu. Next time you are ringing my children. Uliji baba lizima kama wewe. Si ni aibu hiyo jameni? Tufanye ka kama Paul anasema in Acts chapter 20 I worked with my own hands. Kwa nini unashindwa kufanya kazi? Why can't you work? Mimi kanisa ni kwangu sifungi harusi ya mwanaume. Ama hana mapato. Eh mwanamke sina shida. Mwanaume alikuwa assignment ya kufanya kazi. Na Paul akasema a man who does not provide for his own household treat him like an unbeliever. Uyo ni mgondi. Uyo ni muhuni. Kwa hivyo mtu akija kwa wanada kuwa na muliza, unafanya kazi gani? Unafanya biashara gani? Unalima shamba gani? Kama uko na uduma, kuja na watu kumi ambao wanaweka taifi yao katika maisha yako. I have been, been called by the Lord to the ministry. They don't get married until you start getting some 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 tithe kama hujapata kaa hivyo pana kuwa msichana watu yeye ni mwalimu aende afundishe afanye kazi mchana mzima amefanya pi na watoto wa watu tena anakuja nyumbani akupikia anunue chakula akija akupikia hiyo chakula ukishakula tena usiku na mwekea wanted watu wenu mhubiri shara kwenda fanya kazi Kwenda fanya kazi. Ati nimeitwa kwa huduma. Meitwa. The only way tunajua umeitwa lazima tuone matu. Kama hakuna matunda wewe acha kutuambia umeitwa. Bwana asifiwe. Let him was an ear here what the spirit has said to the church. Tumeleana watu wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Let us understand the purpose of the church. Is for a place for God to do what? To dwell in. So let us make sure. Look at the book of, um, give you the, my last scripture. 21, Matthew 21, verse 12 to 16. Matthew 21, verse 12. Have you learned something today? Matthew 21, verse 12. Then Jesus 
went into the temple of God eh? and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold. In other words, they were misusing the house of God. They were using it for the purpose it was never intended. Now listen to his language in verse 13. And he said to them, it is written. What is written? My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Shakahola is a mistake and a stain on us as preachers. It should never have happened. We have allowed some people to make the house of God a den of thieves. We must understand the purpose of this house. It's supposed to be called a house of prayer. Jesus was restoring. He was restoring the house to its original purpose. He found them selling doves, selling He says, come on. And I am praying even today. God, may you arise in your zeal. And cleanse your house again. Come with Anyahunyo again. Some of the things we are calling churches need to be cleaned out. Don't do it. But let God do it himself. As soon as he had made those statements, look at verse 14. Look at verse 14. Hmm? And then what happened? Then the blind and the lame came to him. Where? In the temple. And he did what? He healed them. That is the purpose of this house. Prayer must be in your house. So that if anybody in Gojiri, in this area, and I just you on Ashida, and he wants to meet with God, let them come to the church that you are building. Hata kama ni wa full gospel, wana shwa full gospel. Hii nyuma lazima watu wa mtu ajue, ni kingia pale kama hana wazamani. Ni mesononeka mwoyo kwa jiri ya Paulina. Hame nizomea ni kachoka. Ni mejari ukutuwa mtoto waki ya nilete nyanya, haka tigana na mwana wakwa. Tigana na mwana wakwa. Kwenda uzae wako. Hana kajua kuna mahali naeza kwenda ni kamwaga roho yangu. That is what your church should be for. Wacha hivi tu ingine. Your church should be called a house of prayer. That such a woman can come and kneel at this altar. Without you asking ya umetoka kanisa gani. Wacha mlilie mungu ambayo umejenga madhabau haya. Wakutana na mungu wake hapa. This must be a place where people can come and meet with God at any one given time. Somebody say amen. amen. Imagine that particular table of Bishop Gashara. It had a pastor who was backslidden. Eli, anamuangalia mama na lilia mungu because I believe that Hannah was the first person to pray in the spiritual language. She was speaking in tongues that Eli could not understand. Akasema we umelewa. Mama kamambia si jalewa. Do you remember say, another statement like that? On the day of Pentecost. They say they are drunk. And Peter said we are not drunk as you suppose. Am I in the right church here? Yes. I say am I in the right people here? Yes. Your house, the church you are building must be called the house of what? Prayer. For all nations. can people come into the house you are building and kneel there and cry to God without you all you do is to come in you know Eli baada kwa rebuked na huyo mama di akawa mtu akiro verse 17 of 1 Samuel chapter 1 di akamuambia go in peace and may the God of Israel Grant to what you have requested. I am praying for somebody in this house. You shall build a kind of a house that when people come in and they are troubled, by the time they rise up again, they shall go in peace. They shall meet with the God of Israel. They shall meet with the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That's the purpose of this building. Somebody say, Amen. Let that 
church be a place where people can come and know if I just enter into this building. I know I shall live with the peace of God in my heart. Oh my God. They shall know in this house there is a God who answers by fire. And I am praying right now. In the name, are you in the right house here? I am praying right now in the name of Jesus. May the God who hears and answers prayer. I say may the God who hears and answers prayer. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, may the God of Elijah, who answers by fire, may that God answer you. And may you build a kind of a house. People shall come and meet with the God who answers by fire. 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 He dwells in this house. I can come and meet him here. I can come and connect with him here. I can come and touch him here. For this is the kind of house you are building. Don't build a house where people cannot meet with God. Build a house when people come in, they can meet with. Can I continue? Where the lame, the deaf, and the dumb, and the sick can come in. Those who are bound, those who are possessed, can come in and be set free. Oh, la kazata la baba kazika. Somebody say, I receive that. Oh, la kazata la May the house you are building, I say, may the house you are building, when the sick come in there, let them go out to their healing. May those who are possessed, when they come in, they go out delivered. When those who are bound come in, they shall go home set free. Oh, those who are crying and dying, when they come in, they shall live again. Build a house where people shall know this house is a demonstration center for the miracle working power of God. The next verse says, as soon as the children saw that, I mean, my friend, I'm still in Matthew. Matthew 21. Go back there very quickly. I'm finished with that one. Matthew 21. Here I'm seeing first somewhere. Has it changed on that side? Yes, I gave you Matthew 21, not the computer. Matthew 25, 21, 13. Matthew 21, 13. Just stay in Matthew. Yes. And he said to them, and my House shall be called a house of prayer. But you made it a den of thieves. Go to verse 14, quickly. Verse 14. That's what I was quoting. Then the blind and the lame came to him where? In the temple. And he healed them. May the house you are building be a center for healing. Be a center for deliverance. Be a center for being set free. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Anoint people with oil. And let Jehovah Rafeka touch and heal them. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But bishop, suppose I lay hands on the sick and they, they, they don't get healed. You are not the healer. Yes. Neither are you the savior. Yes. The book of life is not in your church headquarters. The book of life is in heaven. Yes. That's one thing God never allowed us to keep. Because some of our names would have been removed by now. Only the angels maintain the book of life. Yours is to preach. Yours is to make an altar call. Yours is to lay hands. Yours is to anoint with oil. Let him heal. From today. I say from today. You shall pray for the sick. You shall lay hands on the sick. You shall anoint the sick with oil. You shall believe God for their healing. Look at the next verse. Verse 15, verse 15. When the chief priest saw this, one, the wonderful that things which he did. In other words, they were shocked. I pray, may the religious people in this city, in your area, see the wonderful things that God shall do in that house. Because you have got the right pattern. You have laid the right foundation. You have got the building permission. You have allowed inspectors to come in. You have got the right intentions. May they notice wonderful things coming out of Ushuda wako tolewe na maadui zako Ushuda wako tolewe na wachawi 
ushuhuda wako utolewa na wakupinga Simoni mwa Simon the sorcerer come for miracles in your church Bishop Morey When Philip went to Samaria Simon the sorcerer alikosa wateja Yeye kuja kwa kanisa Philip alikuwa anafuata anafuata wateja wake Aliwapatia dawa akadhania wasipokunywa wataku anakutana nao anasema hatujakufa Mlimaliza dawa hapana hatukunywa kulifanyaje tulimwaga na mjakufa hatujakufa kwa nini tunaenda ile kanisa may your church attract can i continue i say may it attract may it silence the sorcerers in your village in your town in your area and right now with the grace of god upon my life and the anointing that i carry if there is a sorcerer if there is a magician if there is a witch or a wizard contending with your church right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus wanahama nasema wanahama nasema wanahama wataokoka wataokoka ama watahama ama wataishia in jesus name i've given them three choices how many choices how many choices wahame ama waoko wasipofanya hiyo wataishia stop wasting time with the local witch you are not in the same league you are not in the same league The church that Jesus is building, you are not in the same league with the, with, with the witch around the corner. Yes. Not in the same league. We are in another league altogether. Yes. What was happening? The Bible says, he, and that the things that he did, and the children doing what? Crying out in the temple, saying what? Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. I want to pray that wherever you are, the, the house that you are building, let there be spontaneous praise. Worship shall be there. Praise shall be there. I say praise shall be there. Worship shall be there. You shall not struggle to worship. We shall not struggle to praise God. The name of the Lord shall be hallowed. The name of the Lord shall be lifted up. The name of the Lord shall be glorified. God shall receive the glory. Not you. Let the glory go to Jehovah. Somebody say amen. And Jesus commented verse 16. Verse 16, and he said to them, Did you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of babies and nursing infants, God has perfected praise. From Sunday school, you are keeping quiet. From Sunday school, to the teens, to the youth, to the main services, to the cell group meetings, estate fellowships, let praise, let worship. Let praise and worship roll in your church, roll in your fellowship, roll where you are leading them in Jesus' name. Where there is praise, it attracts the presence of God. Where the presence of God is, purity must be there. Let your church be a place of purity. A place of purity. This is the purpose of this house. It's not a den of thieves. It's not a place where people are sleeping with their secretaries. Widows are not your portion. Leave the widows alone. You must build a house where single mothers are safe. Single girls are safe. Widows are safe. I don't want to hear you are pinching the bottom of choir girls. When they pass near you, you pinch their bottoms. How are you today? May your hands shrivel the next time you do it. Because you must build a house of purity. Where ladies can pass near you, they know you are not going to touch them. Where widows know you respect them. Where single mothers know you respect them. 
Even if they come to your office as a needy case. Uta wambia, nenda njibani takuletea pesa kwa nyumba. Napelekea pesa kwa nini? Kwa nyumba kwa nini? Mpatia hapo kanisari kama nampa. Wachana na nyumba yake. Your church, your church, church must be a place of purity. Your secretary is meant to work for you, not to sleep with you. If you are struggling with young, beautiful women around you, then you hire a secretary who is an old woman, older than you by 10 years, so that you are not tempted. And the cash on show. Watch out to let a Ibu Sayot. Mme Saidika. Have you understood the purpose of this house? Jesus tells us the purpose of this house. Don't mess up the purpose of this house. That is the purpose. Thank you, Bishop Breed. Thank you, my fellow pastor. God bless you. I've enjoyed ministering to you. I hope you have written notes. I hope you have learned something. Have you learned something? Can I take my wife where we are going? Thank you. At least what somebody say yes. <laughs> Raise your hands towards me. May you walk in the light of the revelation you have received. You are a worker together with God. Building our house for his dwelling place. Amen. May you build it according to his plan. Amen. May you get building permission. Amen. May you use the right materials. Amen. May you make sure there are inspectors. Amen. The fivefold ministry is coming in. Amen. May you maintain the purpose for this house. Amen. And may God bless the work of your hands. Amen. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to to the power that works in you. To him be glory. Now and forevermore. In Jesus name. Let's get seated. We want to thank Bishop, very sincerely. Ali Pokua Akisugumuza, I was saying it could not have been better. Sidio, do you feel it is capacity building? It is capacity building. Bishop, we sincerely thank you for that time. And I don't have enough words to say thank you, but hata sasa tunasikia ya kwaba. Hata tukieda nyumbani, si kuna kitu tumepata. So we thank God, we thank God. We, we, we want to uh, wish or give our offerings very fast. Na kwa sababu tuna deputy governor and thank you madam for uh, coming to be with us. A lot of time we really suffer kwa sababu ya politician wanakuja wanataka ku hijack mkutano wa sugumuza wafanya nini? Wa, waondoke. And you've been very patient and we thank God for you. Nataka to 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 toe sadaka yetu halaka alafu i will call our general secretary at uh, to retire deputy governor uh, at a sema kitu kidogo na leverage kimaru diana ana conduct this kuja u conduct halaka alafu tuone namna gani he is our treasurer. So. Thank you, Chair. Let's appreciate our Chair, Bishop Simon.
It is good to have you, Your Excellency, come to be with us today. God bless you. We just want to go right now to our pockets, our hard bags, and uh, get a sacrifice that we can use to worship the Lord. Our number is going to be displayed on the screen. It's a pay bill number, 247 247 280449. 280449, kindly project it for each one of us. And like I did announce yesterday, all our bills are paid, and therefore we appear before God to come and offer our sacrifices. And we want to honor the servant of God, uh, Bishop JB. Thank you for releasing such grace. We are so stirred, we are so challenged. Tumedungo na mukuki. Wengine takufia mbele. Lakini mukuki tumeipata. Fadhali mtu akufia hapa. Lakini hata usipokufa, utakufia wapi? Takufia mbele. Um, I, I love that you brought the word with the simplicity yet with the distinctiveness. Uh, may the Lord bless you. I'm saying this to allow you to select. Do your selection. Let me do mine. It was a practice of anyone giving an, uh, an, a sacrifice. Yet you, you would go to your heart and do a good selection. Never give mono-eyed animals, one that has no four legs. It has to be one that has no uh, a blemish, one that is blameless. In case you would still want to give your pledges, the envelopes are displayed. We want to ask you, pick an envelope and close your pledges, and then we will drop all of it in our baskets together. So whether you are giving your pledges, whether you want to uh, offer a sacrifice to God, all that is accepted. I want to encourage everyone to give an offering. It's not time to read the Bible. It's not time to pray. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Did we get to hear that? It's time to do what? To give. And before we can do that, let me ask all of us to stand. We want to be grateful to God and to thank him. Our Father and our God, we are grateful that you could love us this much and prepare a table for us and even send us one of the fathers to come and speak to us so well, yet so firmly and prophesy. We pray that they are going to be acceptable to you and may what we give, Father, touch you. It's an expression of our love and devotion to you. I therefore, Lord, bless every minister who appears before you to give today. Some are giving out of need. Some may have severe financial challenges. May the giving that we do today be a good reason for you to visit us and to do us well. And therefore, Lord, we bless your name and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And therefore, in the fear of the Lord, I want to invite us to come and give. We'll begin with our senior ministers in the front. They will come and give. Then the rest of us are also going to come. We also have a basket at the back. It is a holy, precious hour when we have to come and present our sacrifices to God. Thank you. 